but differences aren't grounds for divorce. This is, this is a huge point for me because I've had, you know, <laughs> we've even, we've gotten to a place so, so far in, in, in our culture in America where we say that, that we'll get a divorce over irreconcilable differences. Irreconcilable like, what does differences. that mean? Like, what does that mean? That means that basically we've come to a point to where we say that, that basically we can't change our differences or reasons for us to separate. And so differences are grounds for divorce, but they are an opportunity for negotiations, negotiation and compromise. And so when we find that we have some differences that seem to be dividing us, that's the moment where smart, intelligent, mature, godly people realize that this is a moment where God is enabling something within us to die down so that his greater purpose can be brought forth. So something in us needs to negotiate and compromise instead of put my foot in the ground, you know, make my forehead as flint and debate you down till I win, right? Or stonewall you till you change. How many of us realize that arguments aren't really effective? Put your hands down. Then why are we still doing it? Yeah. If, if we realize that withdrawing and withholding sex from your spouse doesn't work really well, why do we still default to, to, to that method? It, it, it do, if it doesn't work, why do it? Yeah. Like it just doesn't make sense, but there's something in us that when we don't get our way, selfishness kicks in mm -hmm. and we want them to somehow hurt because we're hurt. Well, we'll move on from that. <laughs> so <laughs> communication is essential. And I want to say this, don't underestimate your spouse because you're a great teacher and your spouse is a great learner, yes. contrary to what you saw in them last night. So, <laughs> so we want you guys uh, to go through these, what we call seven effective communication tips. Y'all ready? One more time. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. So number one, um, <laughs> feel the base. If y'all wasn't ready, you are now. All right. So number one, we want you to set an appointment to talk. Set an appointment to talk. The average couple spends only 20 minutes a week talking with each other. 20 minutes. So don't be average. We want you guys to be intentional. You have to actually carve out time to speak with one another. And I'll say this. The more urgent the matter, you, you need to carve out consecrated time to discuss that. So if something is really bothering you, you can't catch a per you don't want to catch a person off guard and right. just dive into something that's really on your heart and they don't have a heads up on it. Right. Right? If I'm not ready. Yeah. If you walk in the door right after you know, after work yeah. and you put your keys down and then all of a sudden you just you yeah. know, you're face to face with, you know, contention. Yeah, you know you forgot to pay that bill. It's like, whoa. They just had a whole day of real work. But you're like, but that was important, right? But so is the person. Yeah. Right. Y'all got that? Right? The person that you want to complain to, they're important. In fact, they're more important than the issue. I don't see no heads nodding or anything. You know? so, so even though what you want to talk about is really important, you have to remember how you deliver that and when you deliver that yeah. information to them is just as important as what you want to talk about. So you want to make sure that you set aside a time um, and, and what it does, and I'll, I'll say this real fast and we move on because we got some other tips to get to, but what it does is it gives you space to pray before you say. When you set an appointment to talk, you can pray about it before you just unload. Yeah. Right? And, and it also gives your spouse time to get ready. They can get prepared. You know, they can gather their thoughts and then say, okay, they want to talk to me about something. And I'll make sure that I'll, I'll show up. So the one rule that we have is when a person says that they want to say, hey, I need an appointment to talk to you. We literally call it that. Yeah. Because we know, all right, that means that some, when they say that, when my wife says, hey, Sean, I need to talk to you about something or whatever. Can we talk tonight? You have to show up. That's one of the rules. That's part of the rules. The, the, this is what helps us to grow is that we don't let stuff linger two or three weeks. We just don't do it. The Bible says don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Right. So overnight, if you allow things to fester, some of y'all been allowing stuff to hang over you for three, four months, a whole year, and you ain't said nothing about it. The enemy is going to take that little seed of deception and he's going to turn the heat up on that thing and it's going to foster into something that it shouldn't be. It could have been killed a long time ago. Now we got a weed growing and choking up the good stuff in your marriage because you didn't kill the weed in its inception. 
So the goal is to set an appointment to talk to deal with it before dark. And the reason why all this stuff sounds good is because it's all chapters in my book. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so you want to make sure that you get a copy of Not Just Roommates. All right. So set an appointment. Number two, stay focused on the issue and not your spouse. Stay focused on the issue and not your spouse. So, you know, when issues come up and you say phrases like, you do that all the time, that's pointing at your spouse and not the issue. Mm. So here, here's the reason why I probably like this point out of, out of all of them. There are some issues or things that we go through um, we have hurts, we grow up, and we encounter moments in our lives that really cut us deep. And so it kind of, you know, changes the way we act. Maybe it changes the way we say things. And so, you know, years down the line, we come together, we get married, and you're still operating out of the hurt years ago. Mm -hmm. And so when you say, you do this to me, or you always do that, the issue may not be the spouse. That's just the, the behavior is, is the, the evidence of something else really going on in their heart. Mm -hmm. And so you need to sit down with them and say, babe, when you do this, it makes me feel like this. Mm -hmm. So can we really talk about what's really going on? And so it really helps you to tap into the main issue of the problem, mm -hmm. which is maybe something that happened to them a long time ago, and they never really got healed from it. Yeah, for her, she would, uh, she would do things that just bothered me to no end. And I would just be like, why? <laughs> you know, but it'll be, it'll be we'll, we talked about this last night. We were talking about our personalities. One of hers is context. And the other one of, what is it, restorative? Yeah. That was called. So the restorative thing means she wants to fix stuff. And then she would also, the context name means she would always reflect in the past. She would just bring stuff up in the past. And in my mind, I'm futuristic by nature. And so I don't care about the past. And so I'll be talking about something new and I'm trying to move on. And I'm having an optimistic moment. And then she would just come in and just pop my balloon. You know, I'm a dreamer. This is what I do. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm like... As I dream, I feel great. And then she would come in and be like, well, remember the other time? And I'm like, it ain't about the other time. But, and then it would just be like, pow. And so she was getting on my nerves. And, and, and I'm going to tell you the truth. In my heart, I was just like, man, she's like a dream killer. And so, so the truth is, um, it, it, and, and actually she became like, after I grew to understand that, like she's saying, stay focused on the issue, not the spouse. I was focused on the spouse. I took offense to her. Come to find out that she is my greatest team player with all of my dreams because of the fact that she's able to say, Sean, the last time we tried something, here's what I learned from it. Now, let me help you build this dream in this way. It'll, that it'll, it'll be sustainable this time. Come on. <laughs> That's me. I'm going to push you off your stool. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see what I'm saying? My greatest team player. I was about to separate from her because I didn't understand that her way of helping the team win was, was that was her strength. I was offended by her strength that actually was going to work for my good. I was mad because she wasn't the same as me. Mm 